welcome to our review on using carbon fuels. So when we're considering combustion, there are two types. We can have complete combustion, which happens when there's plenty of oxygen available. And that's illustrated by the picture on the left hand side with the very blue bunts and flame. Or we get incomplete combustion. And this is what happens when there's not enough oxygen. And that's what you can see on the right hand side in the picture of the Bunsen burner with that yellow flame. If we consider the general word equation, first of all, for incomplete combustion, it's hydrocarbon plus oxygen makes carbon monoxide plus carbon plus water. So remember that it is carbon monoxide here and we've got carbon and water there. Underneath, I've given you the balanced symbol equation for an example. So what we've got there is ethene. So you can see C2H6, that's our hydrocarbon. Plus our oxygen makes carbon monoxide, which is CO, plus carbon, C, and we've got our water, H2O. All we've done is gone through and balanced it. And to get that to balance, we need a 2 in front of our O2 and a 3 in front of our H2O. Carbon monoxide is something we need to know a little bit more about. So first of all, we need to know a little bit about this gas. It's a colorless, tasteless, odorless gas. So that means it's got no smell and it is poisonous. So if you breathe in too much carbon monoxide, then you could die. So this is very important to make sure that we've not got anything that generates carbon monoxide in our homes. And the way that we can avoid having carbon monoxide being given off by any of our gas appliances is number one, by having them regularly serviced. And secondly, by having a carbon monoxide alarm in our homes so that if any carbon monoxide is coming out of our appliance, we get a warning so we can then deal with it. When working out which is the best fuel to use in any given situation, we need to consider seven different factors. So the availability of the fuel, how easy it is to get, the cost, the energy value, which just tells us how much energy it releases, the pollution, so is this going to contribute to the greenhouse effect and acid rain, how easy it is to use, its toxicity, so if it's poisonous or not, and how easy it is to store. Now the kind of question you're likely to get here is a table that summarizes some of those key factors. So the table I've given you there shows you coal, fuel oil and natural gas and it has a little evaluation about those seven different factors so what you could actually do is looking down there you decide which fuel fits with the scenario you're given so you might have to justify it in which case you'd be looking and if you're picking out advantages and disadvantages then looking at coal first of all we can see that it has a high pollution so that's obviously a disadvantage there Whereas if we're looking at the advantages, if we look at fuel oil, then we can see it has a high energy value. So that means it's going to release a large amount of energy per kilogram of fuel that we burn. So when you get one of these questions with a table, make sure you read carefully to see whether they want you to give advantages or disadvantages or a combination of both, and then use the information from the table. Last thing we really need to consider is the fact that when we're thinking about the use of fossil fuels, this is something that is increasing. Now, the reason our fossil fuel use is increasing, number one, is down to the ever increasing population of the world. And secondly, some countries like China are actually newly industrialized countries. So these are the ones that in the past weren't using much in terms of fossil fuels because they didn't have that much in terms of industry. But now, as they're becoming more industrialized, then they're seeing an increase in the amount of fossil fuels they're using to support that industry.